I remember at 9-11 when the tragedy of that event for our nation unfolded, the local newspaper knocked on the door of my office and asked me if I had anything to say in response to this news of being attacked under siege, so to speak. And the first thing that popped into my head was the words of this psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in our trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. All of us have trouble. It was probably 20 years ago when I was traveling in my car going west from Peterson on Highway 10, headed toward Orange City, Northwestern College, where our daughter Jessica was enrolled as a student. And it was nighttime, and it was pouring down rain, buckets of rain. There was so much water on the highway that as I was journeying west, my car hydroplaned and left the highway at over 60 miles an hour, I literally floated into the air and the car rolled multiple times down a 30 or 40 foot embankment. Every window smashed out, the roof crushed. But it was one of those moments where when the car came to rest, I kind of felt my body, looked around. I wasn't even bleeding. <laughs> but it was a moment of trouble and God was with me. We might lose a loved one in death. We might have an awareness that our son or daughter is struggling. Maybe they're struggling with an addiction. We might be struggling in a marriage. Or maybe you've experienced divorce and you know the terror and tumult of how that roils inside your emotions. You might be drowning in financial bills or maybe you've just learned that you're suspended from your job or you were just fired because of the economics that are going on in our society right now. Maybe the doctor walks into the room where you wait and says, I'm sorry to have to tell you and goes on to speak painful truth to our ears. Where are you going to turn in your trouble? That's the question. The question is not, will we have trouble in this world? The question is, where are you going to look when you experience trouble? I want to remind you of what Jesus said in John 16, He said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take courage. I have overcome the world. So we experience trouble sometimes in moments, sometimes in extended periods of our life. You may feel like trouble chases you, like trouble is a constant in your life. Sometimes, admittedly, the trouble is my own making. But sometimes it just washes over us like this coronavirus in the world right now the pandemic that is this powerful, invisible enemy to the health and well-being of our whole world. And we feel vulnerable, and we feel afraid. We feel powerless. So all of us in the world right now are into a forced retreat. But we can run to the God who is our refuge and strength. So instead of feeling imprisoned by my fears and forced into seclusion where I am passive, I encourage us in faith to actively seek the Lord, to actively run to God to be our refuge, to ask him for strength. Ironically, maybe this period of time can be a time of great spiritual awakening and renewal for our world to realize we are not as self-sufficient as we imagine ourselves to be, that in fact, 
we are aware of what is true all along, that we are intrinsically dependent upon the God who gives us life. So I heard a devotional this week that encouraged us to remember that the anecdote of fear is always faith. So in these stormy times, we may wonder, well, God, where are you? In the story that Al read for us earlier of the disciples on the Sea of Galilee in the middle of the night were tossed around like a beach ball on the waves. And they must have wondered, what's going to happen to us? What will become of us? And all So, Jesus, where are you? But I need you to remember that God is not surprised by the pandemic going on in our world. He's not taken off guard, just like Jesus was not surprised as he sought alone time with his father that the storm came upon the Sea of Galilee. He still saw his disciples in the boat. God is not surprised by the coronavirus and he's not powerless to respond. Psalm 46 says these words, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in our time of trouble. That's counterintuitive because I don't know about you, but when I experience trouble, the first mindset is, God, where are you, and how could you let this happen? We imagine and conclude that if we're experiencing trouble or adversity, that God has somehow abandoned us, left us alone to flail away at the problem all by ourselves. But the psalmist reminds us, when you're in the midst of trouble, God is as close as the air that you breathe, a very present help in time of trouble. He's always Emmanuel, God with us. Remember, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. The second thing that strikes me in this story of Jesus coming to his disciples in the midst of the night, in the midst of the storm, is this truth that when Jesus was coming to them in the middle of the night, they thought his presence was a ghost. So we might say, I won't be afraid, though everything changes, I won't be afraid. But the truth is that the longer the storm continues, the more our fear intensifies. It's like boiling pot of water. It just keeps rising up and threatening to drown us. So fear can distort our ability to perceive reality accurately. Your fear might affect your vision to be able to see the truth. So as the storm was raging and the disciples were pulling with all their strength at the oars, the waves were battering their boat. Maybe the waves were even sloshing over the side of the boat and they felt the water filling around their ankles and they were terrified. And so as the storm continues, we'd be tempted to think that our fear is going to keep rising. But the Lord actually is coming to them. And wherever you are this morning and whatever your emotional or mental state of mind, Jesus is coming to right where you are. We assume the worst, our imaginations run to the negative, but Jesus has not abandoned us. So when fear intensifies, affirm all the more, God, you're my refuge. I'm going to trust you. Remember, Jesus is greater than all our limits. Jesus is greater than whatever trouble we face. Jesus is more powerful than our fears. Jesus walks right through the darkest time of their night 
I love the phrase in Psalm 139. It says, even the darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. Even there your hand will lead me. Even there you will lay hold of me with your hand. Jesus walks through the howling storm. The elements that threaten us are not a threat to the living God. And Jesus walks on top of the water. He's the Lord of creation. What threatens us does not threaten his power. Christ's power commands the storm, commands the wind and waves. Let me say it this way. Nothing can prevent Jesus Christ from coming to where you are. No power is great enough to keep him from continuing to come to where you are, to touch you at the point of your need, to bless you with his power, and to hold you in his arms. In the middle of the storm, I encourage you to listen for the voice of God. Be still. And know that I am God. Maybe in the cacophony of voices that always are around us, we need in the middle of the storm to spiritually learn to tune in our ears to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. So in the middle of the darkness, Jesus, as their fears intensify, says, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. So in the middle of the storm, Jesus is eager to reveal his presence in a way that can dispel our fear and fill us again with faith. It's interesting that in the original language, the literal words that Jesus says are, take courage, I am. Don't be afraid. It's a reference to the word that Moses was given for God when Moses stood at the burning bush and Moses asked God, well, who should I send me to Egypt to set you free? And the Lord said, I am who I am. So Jesus is literally saying to the disciples, I am God. You don't need to be afraid. I'm coming to where you are. I will be what you need me To be. So Jesus is saying that I am the same God who delivered you from enslavement to Egypt. I delivered you from the Pharaoh's clutches. I parted the Red Sea in front of you. I'm the same God that fed you for 40 years in the wilderness. I'm the same God that parted the Jordan River and allowed you to go over and take possession of the promised land. So we too hear the voice of Jesus and in faith we're going to grab hold and not let go of all the promises that Jesus makes to us as his people. I am who I am. In miracle after miracle and victory after victory, Jesus would want us to still say as the people of God, we are more than conquerors because of Christ who loves us. So I ask you again, in the middle of our troubles, in the middle of this unique and difficult time for our world, for our nation, where are you going to look? In time of trouble, our faith invites us to look to Jesus. Our vision does not look focused on our trouble. Our vision does not look focused on the source of what makes us afraid. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, it says in 1 John 4, 4. So faith yokes us to the supernatural power of God who, according to Psalm 46, is like a river whose stream, whose current, whose force, whose power flows to us so that God is with us and within us, so that the Spirit's power flows to you. And in faith, we gladly receive it and continue to receive it and depend upon it. So I wonder if I and you are more like Peter in the midst of the storm or the other disciples 
that just wanted to hunker down and stay in the boat? Are we like Peter, that though the storm is going on, we want to have our eyes on Christ and literally walk above the elements of that which threatens us like Peter? Faith yokes us to the supernatural power of God. And so Jesus invited him to come and Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the waves and as long as his eyes were on Christ, he experienced the supernatural. The elements of the storm did not take him down. But as soon as his eyes turned to the elements of the storm, to the wind, to the waves, and he took his eyes off Jesus, his fears sank him. But even in that moment, Jesus' arm was not too short to reach him where he went down. And the arm of Jesus is not too short to reach you where you are, however you've gone down. God is our refuge and strength. He's our hiding place. He's our safe place. God is the place we're going to rest. Even in this stormy time, even in this trouble, God can heal our spirits. We flee for refuge to thine infinite mercy, we used to say in the old church liturgy. Or, like in the old westerns we like to watch, or this preacher likes to watch, where the guy says, run for cover. (laughs) Run for cover. God, we're going to seek you as our refuge and strength. One more point. I read a powerful quote by A.W. Tozer this week. He said, a scared world needs a fearless church. We're to be salt in our culture. We're to be the preservative. We're to flavor our culture with hope. We know God is our refuge and strength. We know God is in charge. Therefore, we're offering hope to the world as an antidote for their fears. We're to be the light in the darkness because ultimately we know and believe our future will not be determined by the coronavirus. Our lives are held in the arms of Almighty God. Do you believe that? That you are held in the arms of God? That you are loved by Him? That you belong to Him? That you're His child? That nothing will separate you ever from His love? So in this forced time of retreat, don't cave in to your anxiety and fear. Instead, run to God as your refuge. Receive the Spirit's power that flows to you. And God will renew us in our faith that we can be the source of hope. Take heart, church. God is our refuge and strength. Amen.